Hey there, everybody. It's Papa here, and today I'm going to be reacting to one of the uh, all-time classic sitcoms uh, that was out, and that's the Beverly Hillbillies. Uh, but I'm not just going to show you any episode. It's the episode that's hilarious and titled Trick or Treat. <laughs> uh, so let's dive into the setup for this particular video. And uh, the Clampett's mistake, here's the premise. The Clampets mistake trick-or-treating for some kind of elaborate charity event. Uh, and they do it in such a sincere way, all right? And that's really what makes the show so timeless. Uh, the, humor the humor comes from their good intentions mixed with total misunderstanding, right? Uh, and Granny's always stealing the show as usual, uh, dressed up with her hair like that, managing to look like she can whoop anybody uh, with a, one hand behind her back. Can you imagine her reaction to modern Halloween parties? Uh, and then Jethro, you know, he's got his costume on. And then, of course, there's Ellie Mae uh, serving up possum stew for Halloween treats. So imagine ringing the bell at the Clampett's Mansion and walking away with some possum stew in your candy bag. All right. So that's it. Let's get into it. I'm going to watch the whole episode. Then I'll come back with some wrap-up comments. It's really funny. Yeah, Ellie. Clampin. Well, you're the prettiest thing I... I ain't never in all my born days. Not an old mountain goat like me ever get a youngin' like... You're a queen. That's what you are in that shiny dress standing there. You're a queen. Feel it, Paul. It's slicker in a toad's belly. I'll <laughs> get if it ain't. What kind of dress they call that? This is what you call a ball gown. A ball gown. Well, you even catching on to what this name. Well, Miss Hathaway, she pinned a piece of paper onto every dress she got me. I tell him what it was for. You better tote along the shotgun and keep fellas away. Oh, I know, Paul. That's what I'm going out for, to meet some fellas. Hallelujah. You know, you're going to find out something I've been saying is the truth. You don't have to dress up in boys' clothes to have fun with boys. <laughs> I'm going to keep my promise, Paul. I ain't gonna wear nothing but dresses for three whole days. And I'm gonna keep my promise, too. If you don't have just as much fun as you did climbing trees and wrestling, you can go back to wearing your pants and shirt. Goodbye, Pop! <laughs> This place ain't got no ants. I'll tell you something else it ain't got. That's me. I'm gonna pack up and go home. Wait a minute. Hold on there. This is home. Not to me it ain't. And for my part, they can give Beverly Hills back to the Indians. Or whoever else was fool enough to come here in the first place. <laughs> come on, let's go in here and sit down and we'll talk this whole thing over. You just got your back up because the police made us get rid of all our cows and pigs and chickens and stuff. Well, that didn't help, hon. But if they don't allow folks to have a stock, why have they got that all fired fancy stock pen down there? Well, Granny, it uh, turned out that that there was something called a uh, tennis court. <laughs> what in tarnation is a tennis? <laughs> I don't know, but one of these days we'll get us a pair of them and go to raise them out there. <laughs> well, you go to raise them. I'm going back home where I can get some good things in life like hog jowls and possum champs. Ah, hold on, Granny. Uh, Jethro's out hunting possums right now. He won't find none. I've been all over these Beverly Hills, and I tell you, it ain't easy. Climbing fences and walls and jumping over hedges to get around those cement ponds where there are a lot of half-naked women laying there smearing themselves with oil and yelling at you to get out, get out. I tell you, Jed, this place is full of the laziest, greasiest, unfriendliest mess of people I ever did lay my eyes on. Here, here, here's Jethro. Hi, boy. What'd you get? I got chased by a fellow with a club. Now, you hear that, Jed? It says Beverly Hill bullies picking on a little boy like Jed. Come on, Jethro, load up the truck and let's head for home. Ah, uh, hold on. I think I know what's ailing you two. You're just plain old homesick. Well, I'm sick of this home, I can tell you that. Yeah, now, I got a surprise. I've been a kind of safe, and I, I reckon now's good times any to let the cat out of the bag. We need pigs and chickens, and he gets us a cat. <laughs> and 
Now, that ain't the surprise, Granny. The surprise is Pearl's coming out here. Ma's coming out here? Yeah, and she's bringing your sister, Jethreen. Hot diggity dog! Yeah, I wrote her a letter, and I said, uh, Pearl, I says, uh, why don't you come out here and bring Jethreen? We got uh, lots of room and plenty to eat, and we sure is a hanker to see you. Oh, boy! I gotta get us some possum now, because if there's one thing Ma and Jethreen lacks, it's grits and possum shanks. You don't look particularly cheered up, Granny. Jed, you might fool that boy with a story like that, but not me. What do you mean? Since when can you write letters? <laughs> now, wait a minute, Granny. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Granny, I didn't write that letter by hand. Hell, the pencil twist your toes, did you? <laughs> no, I wrote it by a new way. The banker's secretary showed me it's called uh, dictation. What's dictation? Well, it's wonderful, Granny. You just talk and she writes it down. She sure must write fast. Yeah, with a bad hand, too. She got a bad hand? This one, she calls it her shorthand. <laughs> I don't care how many letters you dictate, Jed. Pearl ain't a coming out here. Leastwise, not right now. Oh, sure she is, Granny. She's looking to find a husband for Jeff Reen. I'll tell you who Pearl is looking to get a husband for. Pearl. And I think she's got her cap set for that oil man that bought your swamp. Mr. Brewster? Why, he lives clean over to Tulsa. Yeah, but pumping oil brings him over to your place. And I'll bet you pigs to polecats that when he shows up, Pearl ain't fur behind. world, ain't it? <laughs> yes, it certainly is. Oh, this here's my daughter, Jethreen. Uh, this is Mr. Brewster, dear. I'm pleased to meet you, young lady. Hi. <laughs> uh, may I give you a hand, Mrs. Bodine? Oh, thank you. Stay in the buggy, dear. Careful now. There we are. Well, I see you girls are on your way to a Halloween party. What kind of party? Uh, Halloween. What's a Halloween? Uh, <laughs> You don't celebrate Halloween here in the hill? Well, I never heard of it. What's it like? Well, uh, uh, it's an occasion where everyone gets dressed up in their most beautiful clothes. Oh, they, these old things, they're just something I threw together myself. Well, they look like they came from Saks. Well, they didn't. I made them with store-bought yard goods. <laughs> you not, Jeffrey? Yes, sir. Uh, well, uh, uh, what, uh, what brings you girls here on this beautiful Indian summer day? Following you. <laughs> we, 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 we was headed this way anyway. I promised to keep an eye on the old home place for Cousin Jed, remember? Mm. Oh, I hope he won't mind that I had a telephone put in the cabin. You see, we're using it as a sort of a field office. Well, but he, he won't mind. Especially if you would show it to me and I could see for myself that there was no damage done to the cabin. Well, that's quite all right. Come along, huh? <laughs> Same buggy, dear. Well, perhaps you'd like to stretch her leg. They're long enough now. You know, <laughs> Jethreen's awful tall for age. She takes after her father. Her late father, that is. I'm a widow. <laughs> yes, I believe you told me. <laughs> oh, that, that's right. That's when you told me you was a widower. Uh, yes. You, um... Still are, I suppose. A widower? No, yes. Yeah. Stay in the buggy, dear. <laughs> Before you do something, you're liable to be sorry for. You better take another look around. 
See all the nice things we got here that you wouldn't have back home. Like what? Yeah, like this great big cooking room, for one thing. Well, you could take our whole cabin and put it right in this one room. Well, if you did that, I might stay. <laughs> what about them big ice boxes? You got nothing like them back home. Didn't need them. Got nippy in the fall, like the good Lord intended it to. This crazy California stays warm all year round. Well, that's awful good for growing things. That fruit there. Did you ever in your whole born days ever see anything as pretty as that fruit? Don't spoil neither. Don't taste neither. Oh, now. Jethro ate a whole bunch of them grapes. Two apples, a pear, and a whole handful of strawberries. And he said there wasn't one bit of juice in the whole kit and caboodle of them. He said it was dry as wax. <laughs> Here's a my dry and gummy. You ain't supposed to eat this fruit. That's the trouble with this miserable place. You ain't supposed to do nothing. You ain't supposed to have cows or pigs or chickens. You ain't supposed to fire up the still and make a little moonshine whiskey. Answer me, what can you do in this Beverly Hills? Well, you can do lots of things, Granny. Things you couldn't do back home. Name one. Well, uh, you can call up your friends on the telephone. No, you can't. Why not? Because we ain't got no friends, that's why not. There ain't been one neighbor come a calling on us since we moved in here. Oh, so that's what's ailing you. Nobody's been coming to call. Well, now you got to remember what Pearl said. This here is Beverly Hills where the movie stars live. What's that got to do with it? What's that got to do with being friendly? Nothing. I just thought it might sidetrack you. <laughs> well, it didn't. Movie stars are people just like us, ain't they? Yes, it made prettier. Wouldn't it be worth waiting for if one of these days there come a knock on the door and we go to answer it, we open up the door and standing there would be Mary Pickford. <laughs> Mary Pickford? Yeah, with the golden curls hanging down her back and her pretty little rosebud mouth saying friendly things like, uh, Howdy there, I'm Mary Pickford. What would you say to that? I'd say who's Mary Pickford, that's what I'd say. <laughs> She's America's sweetheart. You know that movie house where Pearl plays Pay Annie on Saturday nights? I heard of it. Well, she says little old Mary is everybody's favorite. Well, tell me this. If Mary Pickford moved in that little cabin down the creek from us back home, what would we do? Oh, we'd have gone calling and brought her over a mess of pone and skin possum. Yeah. And has Mary Pickford brought us a mess of pone and skin possum? No, she ain't. <laughs> you gotta remember, Granny, she probably spent four or five hours a day just fooling with and combing that beautiful curl hang clear down. Uncle to... Jam! Well, hello, Jethro, what'd you get this time? I got arrested. <laughs> yeah. Policeman, he took my gun away. He said they don't allow hunting in Beverly Hills. That does it, that does it. Then he pointed to old Duke here. He said, that dog had his rabies shot? And I said, no, sir, that dog ain't had nothing shot. I'm careful with a gun. <laughs> what he say? He said, oh, wise guy, huh? So he put Duke and me in his police car. But we jumped out and run. Oh, is Ma and Jeff Rain here yet? No, and they ain't a-coming. Now, if you want to see your Ma and your sis, you pack up that truck, and you and me will skedaddle back home where folks is friendly. Now, oh, Granny. Oh, God, if she ain't the muleiest little woman. Granny, now just a minute. Now, Granny, will you just let me say one thing? Well, you be quick, because I got a long trip ahead of me. Granny, I know it ain't been easy for you out here. New things is always vexing, especially at your age. But I'm bound and determined to keep this family together. And if you go back to the hills, we's all going with you. I'm asking you please to stay. Not for my sake, but for Ellie Mae. Granny, what this place has done for her is a plain miracle. Why, that wild engine has become a grand lady. I wish you could have seen her go out that door looking like a, a queen in a picture book. I tell you, I just wanted to sit down and ball the way you done when I married her mom. Now she's just... She's out there now. Now, 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 just wait, Granny. Wait till you see. In here, Ellie Mae. 
Huh? You show up right eyes. Oh, Hogan, you don't have to wear boys' clothes to have fun with boys. Man, you promised me you wouldn't wrestle. I ain't been wrestling. So what have you been doing in your ball gown? Doing what I'm supposed to do, playing ball. <laughs> oh, I made two touchdowns and kicked three field goals. <laughs> Well, your cousin certainly seems anxious for you to come to Beverly Hills, Mrs. Bodine. Will you? <laughs> Mrs. Bodine? Yeah. Uh, will you? Yeah. Will I what? <laughs> Go to Beverly Hills to visit your cousin, Mr. Cranford. Oh, uh, well, not right now. I'm awful busy. You see, I do uh, fancy sewing and hat making and give beauty courses and personality building and music lessons. Then on Saturday, I play the piano over the movie show to Oxford. And then, of course, there are my young ones, Jethro and Jethreen. Of course, they're no trouble. <laughs> Jethro's in California, and Jethreen, she's fixing to get married. Well, congratulations. Uh, when's the wedding? Soon as she finds a fella. <laughs> well, you certainly are a busy woman, Mrs. Bodine. Yeah. As Cousin Jed used to say, Pearl, he'd say, the fella that gets you sure don't have to worry about supporting you. <laughs> uh, well, uh, this is the phone I was telling you about. It's called a field telephone. Now, with this, I can communicate directly with the men working at the drilling site. men down there? No, oh, yes. Any unmarried young men? I'm sure there are. Any tall unmarried young men? <laughs> well, they're probably all sides. Yeah. I suppose it gets pretty lonesome working down there. Well, it's very likely this is rather an isolated area. Any specially tall, specially lonesome, unmarried young ones? <laughs> I don't think I can call any by name, no. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, I was just wondering. <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am. Did you tell me where the oil drillers are working today? Well, now... What have we here? Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farm, and pretty, too. You know what, honey? I got something here just for you. A genuine French garter imported all the way from Paris, France. They usually sell for 50 cents, but, honey, you can have it for a quarter. Listen, honey, I'm going to be around a couple of days. You busy Saturday night? <laughs> well, you are now. And there's a dance over in Hooterville. Ooh-wee! I bet you're an armful of mama. I mean it, honey. I like big girls. You just do things to me. You carry me away. All right. Hey, what's going on here? What are you doing? I'm figuring. And I figure best when I'm fishing. There ain't no fish in there. I ain't fishing for fish. I'm fishing for figure. Hey, uh, what kind of figuring are you fishing for? I'm fishing to figure how I can get home. Now, Granny, I've been doing some figuring, too. You know, I think I got it figured out how come the neighbors ain't come to visit us. I'm listening. Well, we I got it figured out here in Beverly Hills instead of them coming to see us, we go to see them. How come? Oh, I don't know how come. That's just the way I got it figured. Mighty convenient figured. <laughs> Granny, it wouldn't do no harm and uh, to give it a try. A lot of things are different out here. Well, I'll fish on it for a spell. <laughs> Take possum. Feet like a whale. Who said? 
And there ain't fish in here. Well, that's the prettiest I ever seen. Ah, I gotcha, you rascal. I'm gonna throw you right in the frying pan. <laughs> <laughs> this thing ain't nothing but skin. Got your Beverly Hills for you. All flashy and show on the outside and nothing on the inside where it counts. <laughs> Fishing people is two different things. We're going to call in on our neighbors, and then we'll do our judging. Well, let's see now. Uh, which neighbor shall we call on first? Mr. Drysdale's off in Boston with his missus, so let's go this way. If you ask me, let's go back that way. Now, Granny, <laughs> you promise. Come on, everybody, let's go. You reckon they'll give us a mess of pollen or something, Pop? Or maybe some salted down possum? Probably so lie on us. <laughs> I'm not expecting anyone, Agnes. Oh, it's probably just them children playing trick or treat, ma'am. <laughs> Hi, ma'am. Uh, we's the clamp. Uh, you got something for us? Yes, Aren't you rather big for this? Yes, ma'am, uh, we are. In fact, I don't see how anybody gets through that little door. <laughs> Just a minute. Come in. Uh, come in and set a spell as you folks stay up in the hill. Well, we, uh, thank you. We got a lot of calls to make. But, uh, this here is Granny. Howdy. Hello. I'm my daughter, Ellie. Oh. My nephew, Jethro. Jethro. And I'm Jed. Oh, hello, Jed. I'm Agnes. Just call me Aggie. Uh, mighty nice place you got here, Aggie. Oh, shucks. Tain't nothing but a heap of bricks, but we call it home. <laughs> uh, well, uh, sure is nice to meet up with you. Oh, well, now, wait. Wait just a minute. I got something for you. Wait a second. Here you go, Granny and Ellie. That's you and... Jethro, you and Jeff. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. That's mighty neighborly of you. And you must come and see us sometime. Yeah, we'll go hunting together. Hey, Aggie, you like to play football? Love it. Well, there's a whole bunch of fellas that plays in the pasture down the way a piece. And they'd like it just fine if I could bring some more girls along. <laughs> I don't forget. Please, can we go out now? Not yet, children. Not till it gets dark. <laughs> Ain't that the most pitiful thing? Heart rendering. Just heart rendering. Nice looking woman. Friendly as you please. But them young and is the homeliest I ever see. I wonder she didn't want to come a calling on us. Yeah. Reckon I'd stay home too if my kids looked like that. Jed, I ain't never gonna say a bad word about nobody. I know what you mean. Diggies, <laughs> every house we went to, they was nice to us, wasn't they? Sure was, Jed. Hey, listen, everybody. I got an idea. Let's call up Cousin Pearl. And tell her to come on out here. Uncle Jed, you can't call Ma on the telephone. Drysdale said we could call anybody we had a mind to. Well, Ma, she ain't got no telephone at home. Don't matter. She ain't never home no how. The way I look at it, you can't ever tell what you can do until you try. Don't forget to spin the wheel. <laughs> Howdy, ma'am. I want to talk to Pearl Bodine back in Oxford. That's right, operator. J.D. Clampett in Beverly Hills. Oh, Jed sure going to be surprised to hear me talking at him on this thing. <laughs> oh, they're ready to make the connection. You betcha you it is. Hello, Pearl, you old rascal. What you doing down there? Oh, there ain't Pearl. This here's Ellie. Jethro talk in a minute, but first I want to say something. You got to come out here to Beverly Hills and bring Jethro in. If she can't get a husband out here, there ain't no hope. 
You ain't never seen so many homely young'uns in all your born days. <laughs> Yes, Pearl, folks was real nice to us. They give us some candy, some chomping gum, and some fancy store-bought cookies. And some Winston cigarettes. And some Winston cigarettes. Winston cigarettes? No, oh, why, certainly. I tell you, Pearl, Winston is good smoking. Sure wish you could taste it. I am tasting it, Garnet. The dickens you say. You mean you're getting it clean down there? That's right. Well, here, Pearl. Take another puff. All right. Granny, that's what you call flavor. Well, these. This is the doggone invention that ever was invented. It sure is, Granny. I don't think I'll ever smoke anything else. You always were a smart one. Winston tastes good. Like a cigarette had order. Now, that was really something now. Uh, you've got to admit that the Drysdales and the Clampets are like oil and water, but it's always comedy gold watching them try to explain Halloween to the Clampets. It's like explaining Wi-Fi to, to Granny, right? Uh, so, you know, this episode is the perfect reminder of why the Beverly Hillbillies became such an iconic show. It's full of laughs, misunderstandings, and just the right amount of heart. Whether you're here for the Clampets' hilarious takes on modern life, or Granny's no-nonsense no wisdom, there's something for everybody. So what did you think of this particular episode of the Clampets version of Halloween? Uh, let me know in the comments below, please. And uh, if you enjoyed this trip down memory lane, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell and uh, so you don't miss out on the next one. Uh, this initially came out in black and white. I have recolored it and captioned it for you. And uh, until next time, don't eat any possum stew without me. Take care.